All right, so we have the exam question on PCH 222, um, the practical question. I'll just go straight to the point. Now, the question says, pipette 10 mil magnesium sulfate heptahydrate solution given into the conical flux and alt add 2 mil of ammonium solution as buffer and then about 8 drops of aerochrome black tea as indicator. Aerochrome black tea is an indicator and titrate with 0.05 mol, molar EDTA solution. Carry this out in duplicate. Now, in a normal format, report your finding. Of course, you know the normal format of report, right? In PCH, your date, your title, your aim, introduction. Now, firstly, you have to know that this practical is complexometric titration using EDTA as the complexometric agent. Now you have to go and read about complexometric titration in order for you to have a good introduction, complexometric titration. All right. Now complexometric titration involves the complexation of a metal ion by a ligand. Are you getting it now? by a lingard in most cases is by a polydentate lingard and in this case the polydentate lingard that was used is edta which means ethylene diamine tetraacetate now if you want to do well in this practical you should also know some other example of complexometric agent and have a general overview of what complexometric titration is all about that is if this particular practical is going to come out in the exams at all, if at all is going to come out. All right. Because I could remember during our time, what we did second semester was qualitative analysis. Right. Where we talked about how to identify compounds like the carboxylic acid. Now, whenever you add carboxylic acid with sodium hydrogen carbonate and it forms effervescence. You know that carboxylic acid is present, effervescence. You know carboxylic acid is present, right? Why? Because of the formation of CO2, which is carbon dioxide, of course, which is a gas. Is that fine? So now, in most cases, what they will always do to you in the exam is you'll be given a table. So you should better go and learn those stuff very well how to test for esters, carboxylic acid, so on and so forth. All right. But that is not the reason why we want to do this. The reason why I want to do this is to, um, since you guys need the solution to this one, let me just provide the solution to this one. Now, what do you observe at the end point? Firstly, you have to carry out the titration. And then, of course, there will be a color change, which we observe at the end point. Right. So your observation at the end point is your color change. Because I've forgotten about this practical, the color change that you are going to see. But definitely, you are going to uh, 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 get a color change. All right. Now, the next one is calculate the amount of magnesium present. Use 15.90 mL of zinc sulfate to calculate the factor of EDTA. Now, firstly, we have to calculate the factor of EDTA. Why? Because EDTA is not a primary standard. Right? I've taught you something like this in your first semester about primary standard and secondary standard. EDTA is not primary. EDTA is a secondary standard, right? Secondary standard are those standards that they are not too pure. So you have to actually standardize them by making them uh, correct anything that must have gone wrong with them before you use them to titrate. But if you guys don't still have the basic understanding of this, I really do not want to go deep into this. But EDTA is not a primary standard. It's a secondary standard. Hence, the need for us to standardize it with zinc sulfate, which is a primary standard. Zinc sulfate is a primary standard. So that is the reason why we want to use zinc sulfate to calculate the factor of EDTA in a process called standardization. Now, how do we achieve this? Now, firstly, this is supposed to give this is supposed to be given to you, right? But since it was not given to you in the practical, you just use your common sense to go to do it yourself. Now, definite most times you usually weigh out 
you weigh out weigh about 1.0 gram of zinc sulfate right and then out of this 1.0 gram of zinc sulfate you dissolve it in 100 ml of water for the standardization process that's what i'm explaining to you out of this 100 ml of water you are to pipette about 10 ml or sometimes 20 ml depending on the one they gave you to prepare so if you prepare 20 ml you use 20 ml for the standardization if you prepare 10 ml you use 10 ml for the standardization right now let us calculate the expected weight of zinc sulfate expected weight of zinc sulfate right now how do we calculate the expected weight of zinc sulfate now you can now say that one gram is present in hundred mil, right? Because from what you can see here, you actually pipetted how many gram? Uh, you actually dissolved one gram in how many mil of water? Hundred mil of water, and then from here you took at twenty mil of it. So if hundred gram, if one gram is in hundred mil, right? It means that in 20 mil, we are going to have a fraction of the 1 gram. Let me state that again. You have 1 gram in 100 mil. But what you are using for this titration now is just 20 mil. So if 1 gram is in 100 mil, it means in 20 mil, you have less than 1 gram, right? And that's what we are trying to calculate here. So this will give us X will be equals to 20 mil which is what you are actually using for the experiment. So this is the one you are using for the experiment. This will give you the expected weight of zinc sulfate, right? So this is going to give us, this multiplied by this is going to give us 100 times X is equals to 20 times one, of course, in gram, because mil we cancel mil, and then divide here by 100, divide here by 100, this cancel this, and then of course, this cancel this, what you are going to have is x will be 0 0.2 gram is that okay so it means that in the 20 mil that you are actually prepared for the standardization there is 0 0.2 gram of zinc sulfate right 0 0.2 gram of zinc sulfate now let us now use this to get the amount the to calculate the factor rather factor of edta now there's a way we have to do this and how do we achieve this first of all we have to write the relationship between zinc sulfate and edta now one mole of zinc sulfate react with one mole of edta according to reactions one mole of zinc sulfate react with one mole let me write it again one mole of zinc sulfate from the balanced equation most times for edta and a complex symmetric titration one mole of zinc sulfate now which part of zinc sulfate is actually reacting it is the zinc ion because complex symmetric titration actually um, involves complexing the ions itself right now, one mole of zinc sulfate reacts with one mole of EDTA, sodium editate, which of course we are writing like this sodium editate solution. Now, one mole of zinc sulfate, what is the mass of one mole of zinc sulfate? It is about 287.5 gram. That means one mole means add everything zinc what is the value of zinc you add it what is the value of sulfur 32 what is the value of oxygen is 16 16 times 4 is 64 when you add everything it's going to give us 287.5 this is equals to one mole of sodium editate but i also told you that this one mole can also be represented with 1000 milliliter one molar sodium editate solution now why you know why because one mole 
one molar solution is equals to one mole divided by what divided by the volume in liter right or divide by one liter I want to convert this one liter to milliliter it becomes 1000 milliliter right and then when you cross multiply one mole is still the same thing as one molar there's even between molar and mole right should have known this by now from first semester then 1000 milliliter right so that means in place of this one mole, we can put one molar 1000 milliliter 1000 milliliter then one molar solution of what ed uh, sodium editate now from here what do you think we can do next it's very easy so find the milli equivalent now from the practical given you are to actually react with 0 0.05 molar edta right you have to react with 0 0.05 molar so it means you convert this here to 0 0.05 molar and how do we achieve that now first of all we have to divide this one to milli equivalent milli equivalent means you divide this one to what to mil which means divide this one by 1000 so when this cancel this it gives us one mil one molar sodium editate solution and then this is 0 0.287 because if you divide this 5 gram zinc sulfate right now what we intend to do is to convert this to 0 0.05 molar so firstly you have to divide here by 10 we divide here by 10 it's going to give us 0 0.02875 gram zinc sulfate is 1 mil 0 0.1 molar sodium editate solution right now to convert this to 0 0.5 divide both sides by how many by 2 so we are dividing here by 2 when this divide to it's going to give us 0 0.1 uh, 0 0.014 375 gram zinc sulfate to give us 1 mil 0 0.05 molar sodium edited so this is the milli equivalent all right this year is the milli equivalent which is this value here of zinc sulfate all right now the milli equivalent of zinc surface so how do we now calculate the factor of edta now to calculate the factor of edta you use the formula it's kind of very easy now how do we calculate the factor of edta it becomes factor is equals to the expected weight Of zinc sulfate all over milli equivalent that the tighter value now what is the expected weight we calculated we say 0 0.2 gram so 0 0.2 gram now the expected weight we are talking about is something is this one here this one we already calculated this is the amount that is present in the 20 mil that we pipetted are you getting this now this is the amount that is present in the 20 mil that we pipetted so you now say 0 0.2 gram then we come here divided what's the milli equivalent the milli equivalent we already calculated it to be this value here 0 0.01475 so you come here and say 0 0.2 divided by 0 0.01438 approximately times now in the exam you are given that you should use your title value to be 15.90 for the standardization have the title value of 15.90 so at the end of the day you have your factor sorry about that you have your factor to be equals to if you calculate it's going to give us 0 0.875 i 
I guess so. 0.875. You can calculate to confirm if it is correct or not. 0.875. So this is a factor of what? EDTA. This is the correctional measure for EDTA. Now let us calculate the amount of magnesium sulfate or the assay for magnesium sulfate now. Now for the magnesium sulfate, this is what we do. You come here. Now magnesium sulfate will react with sodium editate too. We react with the EDTA to form the editate. So this will give us magnesium sulfate plus EDTA. Of course, what we react is what? The magnesium ion then to give us the number of moles of this one that actually react edta is in the form of what sodium editate so what we are saying here is that one mole of magnesium sulfate reacts with one mole of sodium editate sodium editate is the form of edta are you getting it now so that is the meaning of this from the equation normally one mole of magnesium sulfate will always react with one mole of what sodium editate but we really do not need to write the equations or bother ourselves concerning the balance. You just know that for a divalent ion, magnesium is divalent. If you look at it, it's something like the magnesium sulfate is something like this. One mole of a divalent ion usually reacts with one mole of EDTA. That is why that of zinc also, one mole of zinc, zinc is also divalent. Zinc is something like this. One mole of zinc always reacts with one mole of sodium editate or EDTA. Now, what is the molecular mass for magnesium sulfate? It's 120.38 gram. So, 120.38 gram of magnesium sulfate reacts with one mole of sodium EDTA. Now, this one mole of sodium editate, we say we can also write it as 1000 milliliter one molar sodium editate and i've shown to you why it is like that right now we need to calculate the mini equivalent because in the practical what you also did was to titrate with 0 0.05 molar edta solution it was given so with 0 0.05 molar edta solution firstly you have to divide this by 1000 to calculate the milli equivalent because what you are looking for is the milli equivalent so this cancel this, this cancel this. This is going to give us 0 0.12038 gram magnesium sulfate to give us one mil, one molar sodium editate. Now, you have to divide this by how many? By two, right? You have to divide this by 10 rather first. So that we get 0 0.1. So this gives us 0 0.01204. Let me make it easy. Right? And then magnesium sulfate to give us 1 mil, 0 0.1 molar sodium editate. Right? Good. Now, at the end of the day, to get the 0 0.05, you have to divide this by what? 2 to get 0 0.05. So this will give us 0 0.00602, right? Exactly. And then here will be 1 mil, 0 0.05 molar sodium, sodium editate. Good. Now, this is the value that you got. Now, at this point in time, what do you think we can do? We can divide this, or this is our milli equivalent, rather. Milli equivalent. Alright? Good. Now, I've got to the milli equivalent. What you now do is to use this milli equivalent to solve. This is the value for the milli equivalent, it's in gram. Now, use the milli equivalent to solve. Now, from what we know initially, calculated weight, to get the calculated weight of magnesium sulfate. Calculated weight 
is equal to um milli equivalent times title value times the factor right now what is your milli equivalent your milli equivalent was 0 0.00602 0 0.00602 times the title value you got let me use 23.10 this is the title value you get from your titration right from experiment from titration that means when you have carried out your titration this is the title value you have times the factor what was the factor that we calculated the factor we calculated for edta was 0.875 right 0.875 so at the end of the day what do you think we are going to have if you multiply this this is going to give us or oh, let me use 21.30 if you calculate this it's going to give you a value let me calculate this 0.00602 times 21.30 times 0.875 now this will give us 0.112 gram so this is the calculated weight right now you are not giving anything to calculate percentage impurity because for one you are not giving the mass of um the mass of um magnesium sulfate that was weighed but in the practical manual you agree with me that it was given as 0 0.3 gram that was what is in the practical manner but here you are not giving the amount they only told you to prepare how many mil 10 mil of it right so you really cannot just calculate percentage impurity now the next thing is the amount of magnesium because the question says calculate amount of magnesium now to calculate the amount of magnesium in magnesium sulfate you use the formula magnesium all over magnesium sulfate times this value you just calculated which is 0 0.112 gram magnesium is what 24 magnesium sulfate is what 120 point I think 120 point um, um 38 times 0 0.112 gram and this is going to give us a value what value do you think is going to give to us to get the amount of magnesium that is present so this will give us 24 divided by 120.38 times 0 0.112 be 0 0.0223 gram so this is the amount of magnesium that is present in this um, 0.112 gram of magnesium sulfate, right? So this is how you go about this practical calculation. Thank you very much for your time. We'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye. And also, please take note of the other part of the practical, the qualitative analysis. And also, I told you, take note of complexometric agents and what complexometric titration is generally. You may be giving some question from that area, right? You may be giving some question from that area. Now let's see, let me just show you a brief of how that part will look like. You have three columns. Now the three columns, quickly, one column would be test the other column will be observation and the other will be inference so you have test observation they may give you a table and then inference and how you should write that table that's what i'm showing to you so you have to memorize the test they will give you the test maybe one thing react with maybe they will say sample a sample plus sodium hydrogen carbonate plus heat and then 
they may give you the observation. They may say, a five cent observe, like I've shown to you. They will say inference. Inference, they will not put it. They will say complete the table. Inference means carboxylic acid is what? Is present. Now, how about a situation where a five cent do not occur? It means carboxylic acid is not present. Now, sodium hydrogen trisocarbonate is what is used to test for carboxylic acid. Then you have the aldehyde, test for aldehyde, where there will be oxidized to carboxylic acid. You have the ferlins reagent, tolins reagent. You have for esters, they have sweet smell, right? All those tests them that are in your notes, you did your practical manual, you did some tests, just memorize them. They may give you test and inference. You have to fill in the observation, right? So definitely that is what we come out in the qualitative analysis. And maybe this one, that is if they really want to give you guys EDTA, but I doubt. But since you guys want it, that was why I had to solve it. Thank you.